is my niya pure? Right? Is my is my intention even sincere? Like you could be sitting here and saying, Am I here for the sake of Allah? Or am I here because my friends are here? Or am I here because of this? Or I need to purify my intention. And was my intention pure in the beginning? Is it pure at the end? You're constantly questioning yourself and you're developing a kind of anxiety. As one is to address um, the topic of hypocrisy, because I feel like um, it's so easy to, or it's, of course, we should always reflect on our behaviors and see if our actions are in alignment with our intentions. But it's so easy to, I feel like, become a, 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 a hypocrite. I don't know. <laughs> hypocrite. It's called a. It's called a hypocrite. So, <laughs> thank you. So, how can we? Are there like guidelines or something that we can, you know, always reflect on ourselves because? Just asking or correcting our niya, I don't think it's enough because so many times we're not honest with ourselves. Like, why did I do this or why do I want this? We just don't want to look at the ugly truth and how can we, you know, prevent and protect ourselves from that? Good question. And I will give you an answer you're not going to like. Uh, so I will tell you that there is an overly um, negative narrative of Islam that we have been given for the last century. And we have internalized it so we assume the worst about ourselves we actually assume so so most of you have anxiety is my niya pure right is my is my intention even sincere like you could be sitting here and saying am i here for the sake of allah or am i here because my friends are here or am i here because of this or i need to purify my intention and was my intention pure in the beginning is it pure at the end you're constantly questioning yourself and you're developing a kind of anxiety And this is actually not from the religion. Allah, how many times that Allah actually asks us to question our intention? When I go, to, when I do something, there's called something called willpower, strength of will. Am I clear about why I'm doing something? When you go to university, are you clear why you're going to university? When you go to your job, are you clear about why you're going to your job? When you're going to pray to the masjid, are you coming to this lecture? Are you clear about why you're coming? You should have clarity in your head before the act. And once it's there, it's there. And this constant anxiety about whether or not my intention is sincere, yes, sometimes, over time, you can your intentions can start getting messed up. That can happen. But when does that happen? You can tell, with, it's not some secret sauce. It's very simple. You can notice now, if people don't say, if people don't appreciate you, or people don't compliment you, or you don't get the attention, then you're not feeling as good about going to this study or doing this or that as you did before. So now you're, you, you can tell within yourself, hey, I'm becoming a little hungrier for attention or I'm becoming hungrier for praise. My intentions are not what they used to be. You understand? Like if there's a few hundred of you sitting here, if there was five of you sitting and there was less energy in me to give my lecture, right? I was like, oh, there's five people. I don't care. Let me just make it 20 minutes long and go home because only five people showed up. What would that prove? My intentions don't have to do with my work. They have to do with you guys. You got, your number impacted my intention. But I have to have, you know, I didn't know how many of you are going to show up in Stuttgart. I had no idea. I didn't know if anybody's going to show up. I just want to experiment. Show up. I've never been here before. You know? And sometimes people come and they tell me, you must come to this place. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. And then I go there and there's two people, that guy and his brother. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, it's so amazing that you came. I was like, I thought this place is amazing. Not that it's amazing that I came, but cool, let's go get some pizza. No problem. So one is yes. And hypocrisy is a very big, very big word. Use it carefully. Your intentions getting messed up about one thing or something else does not make you a hypocrite. It makes that action no... Maybe you need to fix your intentions about that action. But don't pass judgment on yourself as a person. Nifaq is a disease of the heart. It's, it's a judgment on a, on a whole person, on yourself. And nifaq, you know what Allah says about the munafiqeen? In the munafiqeen, fi darkil asfali min an Hypocrites are in the lowest pit of hell. The lowest pit of hell. You know what he says about them? Sawa'un alayhim astaghfarta lahum, lam tastaghfir lahum, lan yaghfir Allah 
It is the same whether you forgive, you ask Allah for forgiveness, you meaning the Prophet. If you ask Allah for them to be forgiven, or you never ask, meaning if the Prophet prays for them or the Prophet never prays for them, then Yafid Allah don't, Allah will not forgive them. These are not some guys who had some bad intention in one prayer. These are some pretty seriously bad dudes that are being talked about in really seriously bad ways, you understand? And what we do is, we take the worst of that and we use those words so casually for ourselves or each other. It's not like that. It is not like that. This is an extreme that we have developed and it's unhealthy in my opinion. This, this anxiety about the purity of intention, we should have clarity in our intentions. We should cleanse our intentions, but even there, I know it's time for Salah, but allow me to finish this thought about intentions. It's, it might sound controversial to some of you, but this needs to be said. If I answered this young man's question, did I do it for the sake of Allah? Was my intention for the sake of Allah? No. You know why I did it? Because I like him. I like Yaqub. Okay? So I, I just, and I feel good that he asked a question. I wanted to help him. Did I just, did I wait, hold on, Yaqub, before I answer your question, hold on. Let me purify my intentions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Now I'll ask your question. Do I do that? No. When you see somebody, you meet somebody at the masjid, and say, Assalamu alaikum. Wait, hold on, I just smiled. <laughs> Sorry, I was smiling for your sake, but I don't want to smile because I like you. I want to smile for the sake of Allah. I want to be clear. When you, when you hug your mom, when you go home, you hug your mom. You're like, hug mom. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Let me niyat karta hu ek hug. <laughs> Do you understand what this is? When we start questioning our intentions in everything, you know, you're, this is not what Allah asked for. Should you have clear intentions about prayer? Yeah. Should you have clear intentions about hajj? Sure. Fasting? Sure. But there are many other sincere intentions. Helping someone, charity, good, you know, uh, uh, being kind to somebody, smiling. Those are all sincere intentions. Those are all completely sincere intentions. But yes, if you're if you're becoming a fake person, you know it. You know it, and you should catch yourself in that. And if you're becoming too obsessed with appearance and with you, well, how people see you and your 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 social media standing or whatever, that kind of stuff, then yeah, you should have people around you that can say, hey, come on, you're going down the wrong path. But don't, my advice to you is don't, you should, we should all fear hypocrisy, but we should be careful not to label ourselves as hypocrites. I consider that a form of self-hate. You shouldn't do that. You, you shouldn't do that. Allah doesn't do that to you. But you shouldn't do that to yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com